but it's crazy. Everybody there, Eddie Murphy, Salma Hayek, Michael Bay, everybody in my little house. And at that night, that night, that night is special because a guy, the game, just coming up, he wants to come to the party, but my good friend is there. His name is Snoop, Snoop Crip, Game Blood. I'm like, oh shit. I haven't, I haven't really hang with the game guy. The game guy says, I'm good. No, no, nigga, I'm good. I'm good. It's going to be good. It's going to be cool. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. So he shows up. He wore blue diamond studded earrings to show uh, respect to Snoop. They having a great time. Everything is cool. So we partying and shit. Next thing you know, my security comes to me. Party raging, right? In my beautiful white neighborhood. And my security come and say, yo, Suge outside. I said, oh, shit. He said, should I let him in? No, they can't let him in. He said, what are we going to do? Now, this is, now, mind you, this is not the Suge that was, you know, that we see now. This was the venomous motherfucking shut the party down. Everybody run out, Suge. When Suge would walk into the club, literally the DJ would pull the plug, Roll that shit up and get the fuck out, cause you know Suge was finna fuck shit at the height of his gangster. I don't wanna, I don't wanna stop your story. Keep that straight. I saw Suge Knight walk into the Vibe Awards with a cigar by himself, and the whole Vibe Awards <laughs> ran out. Everybody. Right? Everybody. I'm, I'm looking at Russell Simmons doing backflips, Alicia Keys running in a red dress. This. I was the there. Man ain't say nothing. I he was there. He walked in with a cigar, and the whole place ran. That motherfucker, that motherfucker looked like he had a redwood tree. That's how big he was and how big that fucking cigar was. I said, this thing got a redwood. He's smoking a so redwood. So they telling you he's at your front door. Yo, they say, sure got sad. I can't let him in. They said, well, what you going to do? I said, I'll deal with it later. But I cannot let him come in here. I got fucking Eddie. I got, I got Snoop. And I got Snoop in the game. So I'm like, fuck that. So I go up to the game. I said, listen, I ain't trying to fuck your night up. But sure night outside. Serious? Yeah, they don't say nothing. Him and his boys. I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what happened, but them motherfuckers creeped out my out the back of my house like on some. I said, "Oh my god, I don't know what the fuck they about to do." But they creeped out like on some like yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" Here's the funny shit though. I go up to Snoop, right? Snoop was dancing with, like you know, just dancing. Everybody around and girls, guys, whatever like that. Snoop is there. I say, "Yo, Snoop." I ain't trying to fuck your night up, but uh, Suge not outside. Snoop don't even stop dancing. He just leaned over and go, you ain't gonna let him in, is you? I was like, no, nah, fuck it. And he went right back to dance. <laughs> and, and some shit happened. Little birdie. Next thing you know, a fucking helicopter is over my house. And, and they, they had to have some words with Suge. <laughs> the night was saved. But then after that, of course, I had to call him and just be honest. The one thing a gangster always like is a few jokes and honesty. honesty. I said, nigga, I could not let you come into that motherfucking party. What you gonna scare Simon Hayek, Michael Beck? You can't. And you know, he gave me the pass. He gave me a pass for about six months. Cause every six months I would have a shoot where I have to run from shoot. It was just like just a known thing. Every six months. Okay, it feels like you, it's a shoot. You told me one time. He came to the front of the house. You ran to the back of the house, jumped over the bushes, and bro. he was standing there like, yo, I knew you'd be coming out here, Jeff. <laughs> bro, no, this is what happened. I was, I was at a club, and I had, I was at a club, and I had on, nigga, I had on like a seersucker jacket with some open-toed shoes, not ready for combat at all. You feel me? And he's trying to get in the club. I don't know that the club owner didn't want Suge in the club and told Suge that Jamie Foxx said, you can't come in the club. So I'm just sitting in the club. People keep coming and say, yo, Suge, I said, I'm like, that's great. I'll talk to him when he gets here. Then another thing came up, yo, Suge, I said, oh, that's great. When he comes in, maybe we'll have a drink. And then somebody said, Suge, I said, wait a minute, this is weird. Then my boy called me and said, yo, he's driving up. Yo, Suge is outside. I'm turning around. I'm going back home. I said, what? So I got, I got, I was like, wait a minute, something's off. So I sneak out the back with my boy, Johnny Mac. We get in our truck. And as we're driving through the alley, I see Suge walk past the alley like the fucking like the fucking missing link, like fucking, I said, oh, that's him. So we had to go down the street. I gave my boy my phone. He, I said, listen, go talk to Suge and put Suge on the phone. So I went down the street. My boy bravely goes up to Suge and says, Fox want to talk to you. 
Sure grabbed the phone and said, it ain't cool no more, nigga, click. I was like, oh, shit, fuck, fuck it. I hear my boy say, put it back, put it back, put it back on the phone, put it back on the phone. I got to get this right. Because you can't let a gangster simmer for 24 hours. Mm -mm. So they get him back on the phone. I said, sure. And this is how I flipped it. Sure, man, what's wrong? I said, I can't believe you wouldn't let me in the motherfucking club, nigga. I said, sure. Who told you that, that, that I didn't want you in the club? The white boy at the front. So you're going to let the white man. Sure, you're going to let the blue-eyed demon come in between us. We broke bread, my nigga. I would never do that. This is us as black people. We need to come together in the words of Malcolm X. Man, I, boy, when I told you I preached for about an hour, and it gave me a pass. I'm like, Phew. It gave you a pass. Nah, man, let me tell you something. Uh, it's really crazy, man, because Suge Knight, man, he ain't do nothing but show me love. Every time he saw me, hug me, Joe. show me love. Joe. You know I know the story. I ain't Joe. want to tell, yo. I can't even really, you know. But you know I know the story, Joe. You know I know the story. I know, I know, I, I'll say this without giving everything away to everybody listening, everybody watching Joe for right now. The one person that he always had respect for is Terror Squad, Fat Joe. Now, I know the story about the guys in line. Because oh, Dre and them told All right, he's all right. You got to tell that here. story, Joe. So they at the B BMI Awards or the ASCAP Awards. And this is a very mean and vicious Suge Knight. This is when, so he had a desk where all the artists was going in. And these are the biggest artists on earth. I can't tell you their names. I can't tell you their all names. They, I'm gonna say like, I, I, it's the biggest, toughest rappers. The persona. In the game. The, the toughest. is on there saying facts. And they're walking in line up to Suge Knight, taking their earrings off, their watches, their chains off. Like, thank you, Mr. Knight. Then they're going inside the BMI Awards to get their award. So he had a table like, yo, you check in, leave the jury here. And then you can go into the awards. So everybody, they're going on the line. Cool and Dre is on the line. Because the only way you could get in was through him. Wow. He was like the registration and take <laughs> off all your shit. And let me tell you something. Shout out Kenny Burns. Cool and Dre said they walked up. Because, you know, they, 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 they good dudes. They're not gangsters. Yeah. They, they walked up to him and he said, you them guys, you them kids, Cool and Dre, huh? You down terror squad, Fat Joe. You sending my love. That's the big homie. And they walked in. They almost felt bad they didn't get robbed. Because when they turned around, they seen every other rapper about to get robbed. They was like, yo, Cool and Dre is down with this shit? <laughs> like, yo, they walked in with their TS shit, they jury and everything. These are facts. That's you a know, testament. Sometimes, Jamie, sometimes I don't even want to tell these people these stories. No, you have, but Joe, Joe, we can tell them now. We reflecting. We sitting back. We telling the story. But Joe, to me, and, and I can't paint the picture dire enough the way Suge had his control over LA. It was dire. Like he was taking people. I seen him one time. 10, I pulled 20... up to the four seasons. Yeah. I pulled up to the four seasons like one of these uh Soul Train Awards something, right? The man pulled up in like 10 trucks with a hundred guys, right? So he runs up to Shane on everything. He says, Joe, did you see such and such? Did you see such and such? I got a call. He's talking about rappers. I don't want to tell you who. Big don't say the gangster rap. He rappers. was like, did you see such and such? You see this little ass? You see this? I'm, I'm like, yo, I just got here, my brother. He was like, all right, my brother. I see you, big homie. And he was, uh, he was in that weekend, he was robbing everybody. Everybody and got robbed. Is, I'm going to tell you one thing. No, I'm going to tell you one, right? I'm going to yeah. tell you one. <laughs> he tells me that. I walked inside the lobby because I was just arriving. I see T.I. I was like, yo, T.I., uh, uh, I think you should go upstairs. Should just ask for you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yo. That pressure. Nah, that pressure. 100 guys. 
too much. No, a hundred guys. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. I mean, like, I really honestly don't know what happened. I'm not being sarcastic. Hey, listen. I'm going to be I'm honest with you, though. I don't care who you were. Gangster. Nah. This guy was the whatever. biggest. At that time, you really had to be, you really had to be smart the way you move. Bro, this guy was smart. an animal. Yeah, Tom you had to be smart to because. Ceiling with nothing but the realest guys running around him. And he had 300 million. Yeah, major. yeah, you had you had to be strategic. You had to you had to like me being a comedian, like the motherfucker put some pressure on me one night. We at like berries, right? Late night. We have berries down in LA on third, whatever. So we're going to get some knees. So I go in, you know what I'm saying? Hey nigga, how can you don't make no jokes about me? Uh cause I wanna live. Because I <laughs> you know wanna live? Saying? Like I wanna live. Like he said, tell some funny jokes about me. I said, sure, come on, man. Cut, cut, cut that shit out, man. You like, told some funny jokes. You had beef with this dude. Man, I was, I said, bro, I'm not falling for that shit. And so it was just like, like I said, that pressure was amazing. But at the same